So again, my name is Omar Passens. We are um, with the city of San Jose. We are recording this uh, session. It's a community meeting to talk about a proposed uh, RV uh, community safe parking site. We're going to get started in just a, a couple of minutes. We do have uh, language translation services available. I'm going to actually ask, uh, I apologize to the, uh, the interpreters, we're going to run through that same process one more time here now that we're recording. So I'm going to ask the, the Vietnamese interpreter to just provide some information about how to access those services. Thank you. Hello, my name is Juan and I'm the Vietnamese interpreter. Yeah, xin chào quý vị. Tên tôi là Juan ạ. À. Tôi là người phiên dịch của quý vị ngày hôm nay. Thì bây giờ anh sẽ đưa ra cái lời hướng dẫn cho quý vị vào kênh nghe tiếng Việt nha. Nếu mà quý vị đang dùng máy tính bàn hoặc máy tính sát tay ấy, thì tí nữa cỡ chừng trong vòng 30 giây quý vị sẽ thấy cái hình quả địa cầu. Nó để cái từ là interpretation bên dưới cái màn ảnh. Quý vị chạm vào cái, 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 cái hình đó và quý vị sẽ thấy cái hàng gọi là Vietnamese và quý vị bấm vào đó để nghe tiếng Việt. Nếu mà quý vị đang dùng điện thoại thông minh giống như là iPhone hoặc là iPad ấy, thì cái màn ảnh nó sẽ khác. Quý vị phải chạm vào cái màn ảnh để nó nổi lên ba dấu chấm bên tay phải trên hoặc là dưới quý vị chạm vào ba dấu chấm đó và đi xuống cái hàng nó gọi là language interpretation quý vị chạm vào cái hàng đó và thấy Vietnamese để nghe tiếng Việt thì trong suốt buổi họp này ấy, nếu quý vị có câu hỏi thì xin quý vị hãy chạm vào cái hình bàn tay để mà chúng tôi biết quý vị có câu hỏi nhé rồi chúng tôi sẽ hỗ trợ cho quý vị và bây giờ thì anh cũng đánh cái lời hướng dẫn vào cái hộp chat để cho quý vị có thể đọc cái lời hướng dẫn nếu mà anh nói nhanh quá cảm ơn quý vị nhiều Thank you very much. Again, we're just uh, providing some uh, uh, information from the interpreters about uh, language access in line with the city of San Jose's uh, language access policy. And I would like the Mandarin interpreter to uh, share. Hello, everyone. This is Glenn, a Mandarin interpreter. 大家好，我是来方言翻译中文的啊。如果您使用电脑呢，或是笔记啊，笔记电脑的话，请要想听中文呢，请点下面等一下会有一个小地球仪啊。那点一下，然后呢，选中文。如果您是用平板或手机的话
Dạ thưa quý vị cho chúng tôi vài phút nhé. Hiện tại bây giờ chúng tôi đang à, chuẩn bị cho quý vị vào kênh nghe tiếng Việt. Nếu mà quý vị cần nghe tiếng Việt à, và cái buổi họp ngày hôm nay thì chúng tôi nói về à, chúng tôi nói về một cái đề xuất à, cho một cái bãi đậu xe cho xe RV à, thì à, xin quý vị hãy chờ chúng tôi một tí xíu. And then Mandarin. Oh,我们现在呢正在在启动这个翻译的功能啊哈，请您耐心的等一下哈。我我们这一位呃现在发言人是欧马尔·帕森，他是呃圣何西市的啊这负责人之一。好，谢谢，请耐心等待。And oh, uh, Spanish. Que vamos a iniciar la junta y va a venir la la persona que va a hablar y eso va a iniciar en unos minutos cuando ya tenemos los canales listos. All right. So are we we're, we're, are we ready? Were we able to get people over? Uh, yes, I started the channels, Omar. Great. Okay. So again, thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, it's just about 5.39. Most of this um, time that we have together, we spent listening to you. But what I'd like to do, do first, so we'll, there's a short presentation. Before we do that, though, I want to um, turn, just turn it over to a few of our elected leaders in the city of San Jose. And so we're going to start with uh, uh, our mayor, uh, uh, Matt Mahan. Thanks so much, Omar. Hi, everyone. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Thank you to city staff for putting this community meeting together. Uh, great to be here with council members Torres and, and Cohen. Um, you know, I, I'll be very brief. I, I guess what I would like to express to everyone more than anything is that your city staff is working hard to address the impacts of homelessness in our community, to find safe places for people to go. We have heard you loudly and clearly that there is a tremendous amount of frustration with lived in vehicles, especially RVs on our city streets, as well as encampments. So we are pushing ourselves to really scale up the rate at which we're providing basic shelter and transitional housing units to more permanent housing. And part of the set of solutions we're looking at, again, to give people safe places to go and reduce the impacts of homelessness on the entire community, one of those solutions includes safe parking sites. I've had the opportunity to see one of these sites myself where people are relocating with their vehicle, getting services, job training, job placement, access to basic sanitation, even the things we all take for granted, like knowing where you're gonna throw away your trash or go to the bathroom. And in doing that, the immediate impact on the neighborhoods is lessened. And over time, people are actually able to get on their own two feet and graduate into more stable housing, often walk away from their RV onto something more stable, more permanent, and, and really with greater self-sufficiency. So we have seen these sites work we know, and I want to, I want to acknowledge that uh, there, there's no easy answer to this challenge. Every solution that we move forward encounters resistance and concerns, and that's very fair. So I, I want to also share, and you'll hear more about this, but we are extremely thoughtful when we're moving forward these solutions about how we ensure that it's a win-win for the neighborhood. I firmly believe that neighborhoods that step up and take on the solutions to homelessness should be made better, not worse off because of it. They should see an improvement in safety, in blight, and get more investment and more attention from the city because they're doing the right thing and being part of the solution. So I, again, that's just high level framing. I know we're gonna get into a lot more detail here, but I wanna end homelessness in our city and we're gonna need your help to do it. And having safe parking sites is gonna be part of the answer to that. And we're gonna have to really all pull together and push ourselves if we're going to if we're going to turn the corner on this on this crisis. So I appreciate you being here. Really grateful to all of our staff who've helped put this together. I know you'll hear from our council members, but I just want you to know this is a top priority and we're pushing ourselves to really put a dent in the problem, but we can only do it if we can deploy solutions in uh, in our city with your support. Thank you, Mayor Mahan. Um, and just for, for those who, who may have joined, uh, we are here to have a community meeting about an, uh, an, a location for our, our members and RV communities that are on street to be able to come off the street uh, to a safe and secure location. We're going to talk more about that, but we just heard from Mayor Mahan, and now we're going to hear from Council Member uh, David Cohen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, good to be with you tonight to talk about this important milestone in our work towards addressing homelessness in our community. 
Um, I've been committed over the uh, past few years to working on improving the neighborhoods in District 4 that I represent, and I represent the area uh, near the Berryessa BART station and Berryessa Crossings neighborhood, um, which is the closest neighborhood to the proposed site and why we're having this meeting tonight. Um, it's important for those of us who uh, want to solve the problem also to step up and have solutions within our districts, um, make sure those, those solutions are distributed around the city. And District 4 is one of the five most impacted districts as far as people living on the streets and living in vehicles. And we believe is one of the highest number of people living in vehicles live in District 4. And so I've been focused on trying to get a space for RVs uh, to park safely and um, provide services that people need in order to be clean and orderly while they're living in RVs. Um, people choose to live in RVs or might be forced to live in RVs for various reasons, and we want to make sure that they have a safe place to go. The neighborhood in Berryessa Crossings has been very impacted by homelessness, and I've been working with the residents there um, often to try to address the impacts that are spilling out into the neighborhood. And I want to thank folks uh, in our city manager's office and our housing department, some of whom are uh, on this meeting tonight, for working with us as we uh, try to find solutions for all the residents there that match their need. Um, but the RV parking is a very important step in uh, addressing the problem. And I want to thank Councilmember Omar Torres. You know, the, the site we're looking at is right on the border between District 3 and District 4. And it's a, a collaborative effort here, the two of us working together uh, to provide the service that's needed in the northern part of the city. So um, thank you for being here. And I'm all, my office is always available uh, with to answer your concerns and questions on the topic of homelessness and um, what might be happening in your neighborhood. Thank, thank you very much, Councilmember Cohen. Um, we're going to go to uh, Councilmember Torres, and then we're going to have a short presentation followed by most of the time spent uh, answering questions that you have and, and addressing any issues that may be raised from the community. So uh, we're gonna switch and, and go ahead, uh, Councilmember Torres. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for being here. I know these uh, community meetings are very, very important, especially when it comes to, to dealing with our, with our homeless crisis. As we know, uh, this is the number one concern that many of our constituent and, and small businesses have. And I'm very happy that we are actually offering a solution, especially in, in two impacted council districts. And we have our, our mayor here as well, who we're all working together to make sure that uh, our unhoused folks are no longer living in, in RVs or in front of your home or in your business corridor. So I, I really, really want to thank uh, Omar Passens, our housing staff, and uh, our other homeless concern staff uh, for, for putting this meeting together and making sure that uh, hopefully we have a safe parking location for folks uh, in in this uh, in this area, it's uh, safe parking is it's off it offers stability uh, for folks living in 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 vehicles or RVs, and this site is going to have it all. It's going to have a place where we know uh, that they're going to get the help that they need, where they're going to be able to find permanent housing and uh, employment and. Uh, all that good stuff to make sure that they're, they're they're no longer living in their cars or in front of your homes or in your business corridors. So so I'm I'm committed to 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 working on many uh, solutions on on making sure our our unhoused are uh, find a place to live, along with Council Member Cohen and Mayor Matt Mahan and our our housing department. So thank you so much for for being here. It's very important. Uh, so please definitely. Uh, Give us give us ideas, suggestions, share concerns. This is why these meetings are 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 are, are held. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Torres, and thank all of our elected leaders for 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 showing up and, and stepping up and really being uh, committed to this effort. Um, it's really a one 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 team effort in the city of San Jose. So, as I mentioned, my name is Omar Passens. Reagan and I are going to do a presentation now. Uh, I'm relatively new to the city, and I just want to say that, that one of the things that has been great about uh, joining the San Jose community is how committed um, all of our residents are to trying to find solutions. And also, um, I, I, I want to stress that we as a city believe it's important to listen without judgment, right? These types of conversations are, are fairly charged, or they can be. And so uh, when we get to the Q&A portion, there may be people who have a range of, of views and opinions, 
and had asked that we just try to respect our each each other and our neighbors and 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 uh, whatever people's opinions are, they give them a chance uh, to speak and to ask their questions. And we will do our best as staff to answer those questions directly. And if we don't have a direct answer, but we can get one, we'll go back and and get it for you. So I, I just wanted to start there. I'm going to share the screen now. Uh, let's see if it, this is. We've been doing this Zoom stuff for years, but it just always seems to be a little dicey. So let's just see. Uh, there should be a, uh, the, uh, uh, an unhoused uh, gentleman receiving services on, on this screen. Uh, does anybody see that? There is. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. So I mentioned that Reagan and I are just going to going to jump in. I, I'm going to first just help us understand where we're we going, right? So there's going to be some background information. It's really important to just level set so that everyone has a sort of common understanding of What's the scope of the issues that we're dealing with? And what are some of the things that we have been doing? You're, 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 uh, through our mayor and council elected leadership, there's a sense of urgency. And we want to make sure that you understand this is one step in a lot of work that's being done. And we're trying to do it as, as urgently, but as thoughtfully and compassionately as, as possible. Uh, we're going to go through some of those, those citywide wide efforts. And then Reagan's going to help us understand just what uh, RV safe parking is. What are we talking about? So that when, when you look at this or you maybe afterwards you want to share this recording with members of your family or friends, they'll have a good understanding firsthand of what, what this, this conversation is, is really all about. And then we'll talk specifically about this barrier of street option. We, we want you to understand uh, we've got a map to help you orient to where we're talking about. Uh, uh, and then we'll, we'll get to a, a chance where we can then most of our time today, we got about this is about you know not more than ten minutes or so, and then most of our time will be spent really listening to you. So, getting into the just a little bit of background to understand the scope of the need in in uh, our last sort of point in time count that gets done on a biannual basis, uh, there, there were six thousand six hundred fifty people, including almost five thousand, who were living outside on the street. That sort of unsheltered. So that includes people who are living in RVs, which is something that you, you pr probably see often. Um, this is not the only source of data uh, to help us understand the magnitude. There's a, 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 there are a few others, but it's important to understand that this is a significant, significant issue that many people see in their, in their daily lives. What we also wanted to share relevant to this conversation is uh, recently we, uh, with our, our teams, conducted a partial assessment. Uh, and determined that there are at least 400 RVs on the streets of the uh, city city of San Jose right now. And so part of uh, that 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 push came from uh, actually um, memos or, or directions from some of the council members that are here today, or the council member Cohen and, and Mayor Mahan uh, pre previously when he was a council member. Uh, pushing to understand what's the scope of this issue? What can we do about this issue? What are solutions that will help people get an alternative? And so part of that led us to understanding more about what's on the street in terms of people in need um, and, and, and then moving forward to, okay, well now let's get, get closer to a solution. Before we turn to sort of what is the, um, what, what's going on, what are we co contemplating for that site and what is RV safe parking? It's important to know that the, the region is, is part of a, a supportive housing system that created a community plan and homelessness. A lot of times people don't just don't know that the, the region, um, city of San Jose, the county of Santa Clara, uh, Santa Clara County Housing Authority, and a backbone organization named Destination Home, uh, and you know people with who actually currently or formerly were experiencing homelessness themselves all came together and with uh, private sector and public sector and business and labor and on and on to, to come up with a, with, a, with a plan to address and had these three priorities. And most of our work is really in that third strategy for this for today around improving quality of life for unsheltered individuals um, and creating healthy neighborhoods for all. You heard one of the uh, one of our elected leaders talk about the challenges of just meeting basic needs like where do you go to the bathroom, right? That, that doesn't create a healthy neighborhood for all when, that, when you don't have that access. And so we're really coming to you today to explain what we've done, but more importantly, what we can do together. Um, this is a, just a, some information about people who have been housed, uh, the over nearly 10,000 people with that same supportive housing system that I mentioned. And, and you'll notice on this slide, 
84% of those people have some affiliation to the city of San Jose. That's a regional statistic over the last few years, but many of those people are affiliated with our city. And you might ask yourself, well, if that many people are getting housed, why does it feel the way it does outside? And, and, and why, what, what's, what's really going on? And the, the reality, and this, this slide really helps bring the, the point home. On the one hand, right, it used to be the case that for every two and a half people, right, who, who, um, who uh, got off the, who, excuse me, who entered the street. Sorry, I got that one backwards. For every one person that we housed, two and a half more people uh, entered the street or became homeless. That's too many people. Even now, with all of that work, it's getting, this rate is changing. Now for every, now it's down. For every one person we house, only 1.7 people are entering the street, but it's still lopsided. So we really have to, that's why you see some of the challenges that you do and getting that number down really, really matters. So now what we're gonna do is pivot a little bit though and go to uh, just what, what is a safe parking program? And remember, for those who may have joined late, late my name is Omar Passens, I'm with the city of San Jose. Uh, we're here to talk about a proposed uh, RV safe parking community site uh, on thir uh, 1300 Berryessa. And uh, we're just going through a few slides. There's about five to six more minutes left uh, on this part. And then we're gonna switch to answer any questions or hear comments that you all have. Um, where's this location? Here's the map. It's, uh, you can see this is sort of, there's Berryessa Road uh, kind of bisecting it. And you can see the Bayshore, Bayshore Freeway. Um, this is a proposed site. One of the things the council has been uh, uh, has stressed with us is the importance of these community conversations and opportunities for community to, to weigh in. Um, we have done a lot of due diligence. There's a great deal more to be done, uh, but, but this is a, a pro the proposed uh, location. And now what I'd like to do is just uh, turn it over to uh, Reagan Henninger from our uh, housing department to share a little bit about safe parking. Reagan? Thanks, Omar, for that. Uh, background and context of our uh, the problem and our regional uh, solution. I did want to just level set a bit and kind of explain what exactly is safe parking. Um, safe parking is really just like the name implies. It is a safe designated place off the streets for RV people living in their RVs or vehicles to park um, and know that they won't have to be moved by PD or code enforcement. Um, typically there is on-site management and security. The on-site manager is typically a social service provider, a local nonprofit that um, is skilled in uh, working with people who are currently experiencing homelessness. Um, safe parking can be for individuals or it can be for families. We always uh, separate the two um, programs, however, on different sites. And then uh, a really important component of safe parking is uh, safety and security for the people on site. They are looking for safety and security, not to be harassed or moved around town. Um, but safety and security for the surrounding neighborhood as well. And then a lot of it is just access to basic needs, um, showers, portable restrooms, water, um, and then access to all of those uh, social services. This is not the first time that the city has operated safe parking. We have uh, operated safe parking in the past. Our previous programs, 69% uh, of households transitioned into shelter or permanent housing. 95% of those households remained housed for over 90 days after leaving the program. And 100% of participants in our previous safe parking programs have felt that their needs, their basic needs around um, security and food uh, and just kind of access to basic needs were met. Next slide, Omar. Did it go forward? There you, there you go. Uh, so the, as I mentioned, the primary goal 
of safe parking is to assist people experiencing homelessness um, to have access to supportive services and referrals into shelter, transitional housing, and even permanent housing. There are other additional outcomes that we strive for. Um, one of them is reducing impacts on the surrounding neighborhood and businesses. When RVs have a designated place to park in a managed and safe environment, we believe that reduces the impact uh, that neighborhoods and businesses feel when RVs or lived in vehicles are parking uh, in front of their home or outside their business. And then the other goal that we have is really reducing environmental and public health impacts. When people have, again, access to basic needs, a place to use the restroom, a place to shower, a place to um, dispose of their gray and black water for their RV, all of that uh, reduces those environmental and public health impacts. And then finally, you can see uh, on the right here, some of the basic needs we provide, our model. We provide all of those basic needs that I just mentioned. There's typically an operator that's on site 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we do require our operator to also have a good neighbor policy. For example, um, what does it mean to be a good neighbor? You have quiet hours on site. Um, another thing is you don't allow uh, people participating in the SAFE program to park any secondary vehicles outside of the program. We keep everything contained uh, on the program site. Next slide. Uh, so uh, we often get asked what are the criteria that we are looking for when we're uh, establishing a safe parking site, we do have minimum criteria in order to meet some basic life safety needs of the program in order to just operate a safe program for the community and for the participants. So for example, we're looking for a large site, a minimum of a site that uh, could accommodate 125 kind of standard size parking spaces. And the reason for that being is not that we may not have 125 actual vehicles parking there, but we are required um, by our fire department to space vehicles or RVs apart for safety reasons. And so um, we need all of that space. We also need space on site for adequate um, basic needs things like having portable restrooms on site, having hand washing stations, having storage space on site for um, participant belongings, but also storage space on site for the staff who are gonna be on site every day. And then other examples uh, that are just basic kind of basic needs and safety, things like lighting, a well-lit site means it's safe for everyone. And then access to things like sewer and water hookups as well. Uh, next site. Next slide. Um, so I'm gonna just uh, switch topics and speak a little bit about communication and community engagement. We understand that is really important for surrounding neighbors and businesses. It's important to the city as well. We understand that to have an effective and successful program, there needs to be a great amount of communication between the city, our operator and the surrounding neighborhood and businesses. And if that good communication exists, we believe it makes our program much more successful. So looking forward, typically our uh, safe parking sites and all of our interim housing sites, we establish what we call a community advisory committee. That is a committee that's comprised of nearby stakeholders, businesses, residences. We also like to involve people who have lived experience of homelessness. It's an opportunity to meet at a regular cadence. Usually it's monthly. We talk about um, how the program is going to be set up, how it's going to be designed. It's really um, an opportunity for the neighborhood and businesses to have 
um, to have impact and say and input on how the program operates and how it's designed. So things like quiet hours, fencing, um, all of those sorts of things, day-to-day -day operation stuff, we review in our community advisory committee. Uh, we also have uh, coordinated city services across multiple departments, the police department, Beautify San Jose, Department of Transportation. Um, usually those departments are also engaged in our community advisory committee meeting so that they can hear any uh, concerns of the neighborhood nearby uh, and proactively work with us to address any concerns or issues. And then lastly, we always set up a phone number and an email um, that is monitored every day. The reason we have a generic email is because if staff is ever out for vacation or sickness, we have the email covered so that we can respond um, in an urgent way. Uh, so that's why we have kind of that general email. But um, I really want to emphasize how important it is to engage the community in the work that we're doing because we believe it makes a more effective program. I'm going to turn it back to Omar. Thanks, Reagan. We're almost done and about to open up for questions or almost done with the presentation. There are a couple of key points that I want to just make sure to stress. The first is about like what's coming next. We're talking about a six acre site, roughly this 1300 Berryessa location that's sort of right on the border of a couple of the districts. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll make this presentation available. It's helpful for everyone watching this, whether live or recorded, to know that uh, we proactively, a few weeks ahead of time, sent mailers to over uh, anyone, actually over a thousand feet within the, uh, around the project site. The council has a, a policy that, um, that creates some, some space there. So we made sure to do proactive um, outreach. There's a, a ton of due diligence that is required to get things like this done from environmental review and on down the line. We will continue to do that work. There are things that we have to come back to council to, to potentially present them and, and get that buy-in. And we're looking to come potentially on May uh, 23rd. So uh, we wanna share, share that information. And then before we open it up, I, I wanna say, we spent a, a good deal of time talking about the it, why this is important that we want to help people get off off of these street locations like the one pictured in in here um, we want to offer the safe service safe and supportive space that Ray, Ray, Reagan mentioned um, and and also because in this scenario we are looking to offer people a place off the street to park we are also looking to go from situations like this to ones like this we are also going to say and I will tell you that we have had staff from the city manager's office and the housing department go out already and speak to people who are in RV communities. It's a very important part of this process to find out what they need to feel comfortable going to a site like this. Because what we're going to do is to say, we're going to give you this opportunity and we want you to have the, a, a place that, that you can get the safety and security. And the place that, that, that existed prior that's on the street is, is going to be returned to its, its intended use. And that's a, it's a, it's a, a public street, and so we want to make sure that that happens. And then also, as I mentioned, uh, there are other of these communities um, that exist. Reagan mentioned that we have done this in the city of San Jose before. Uh, we want to make that possible. And as Reagan also mentioned, uh, that our, our ultimate goal, right, is to really help people get to 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 that permanent housing step, uh, whatever that permanent housing option is is for them. And so. With that, I'm going to stop this screen share. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their patience. It's just a little after six. Uh, I'm going to allow folks to, to ask any questions. I would say if you uh, want to use the, the hand feature, I'm just looking around. Um, is, there, is there any question or comment from, the, from, from those that are in attendance? I see uh, Pat Mapelli. Please feel free to come off of mute. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Pat Mapelli. I am with uh, Granite Rock. Uh, Granite Rock is the uh, owner operator of a couple of facilities in San Jose. Um, we are a uh, a construction material supplier, 
And uh, we actually own and operate the property immediately across the street from this site. Um, we all have um, facilities in Redwood City, South San Francisco, and several in the in the Monterey Bay area as well. In Redwood City, um, we have uh, one of these RV parking facilities immediately adjacent to to our construction materials yard, and um, and it is well managed, and it's been there for about two years now, and we have had absolutely no issues um, with. Um, that site being located immediately adjacent to us. I have to say I was a little skeptical at first, um, but, you know, the assurance of, hey, that we're going to, this is actually a better place for these people, excuse me, for these people. They will, um, they will have the services available to them. Um, you know, it's managed, there are rules, um, it's lit, all that kind of stuff. It actually reduced the amount of problems we were having with, with uh, break-ins and People coming in at night and, and plugging in extension cords into outlets at our facility and, and that kind of stuff. So it actually helped reduce some of the problems that we that we uh, that we were experiencing. So I, you know, I just want to say for the city, you know, I applaud you for what you're doing. Um, this is this is really um, helping the city and helping these people. Um, so those people that may be a little skeptical about having this in in within the vicinity or neighborhood of that you uh, do business or reside, I can assure you that um, from my experience, it is the best option um, to help get these people to transition into a better place. And um, and I just want to applaud the city for for their efforts on this. Thank you for sharing, sharing that, Pat. We, we, we really appreciate that direct experience. Um, it's uh, to have a, a business owner, a, a business representative come in and share is, is really valuable. And, and I, I want to be clear that as a as a city and as a community, um, there, this is not about uh, in, any of us, you know, demonizing uh, people for trying to meet their, their basic needs. I, I think to Pat's point, right, it's when you're in a, a difficult situation, like you, people have to use the restroom, people need power for food. This type of option creates a way to do those things safely, hygienically, with with good public health and social support. And so we we really appreciate that that feedback, Pat. And um, and it's it's helpful for us as we make sure to try to plan with with that type of holistic view in, in mind. Um, uh, other uh, uh, questions or, or comments? One of the things that I'll just reiterate, so uh, where this is the city of San Jose, my name is Omar Passens. I'm joined by colleagues from the city manager's office and our housing department. And we have just been, gone through a, a presentation uh, in case you're seeing this uh, via recording or, or, or live. There's a lot of information uh, to be captured about what an RV safe parking program is. We're looking at a site, a proposed location at 1300 Berryessa. Uh, it's about six acres. Uh, we have departments as wide as our planning and environmentalists to our public works, to our housing department, right on down the line, all evaluating to make sure to look at issues related to how to make it a safe quality site that, that really meets the needs of the, of the community. Uh, so we have just done that presentation. We've had some feedback. I want to see if, um, if, if there are any comments or, or other feedback. I, I will say, I, I did mention before, there's sort of a two-step process here. We are both um, seeking to provide people with an alternative option that's safe, that is informed by people who are currently living in their RVs, and then also for for those locations where we um, where, where the where they come from, where we're, we're going to make it so that those are places where you just those are no longer places to park. We're not going to move people and just move them around the community, but since we have a place that's off the street and has the services and support that that, that uh, Reagan mentioned, we're really going to going to uh, uh, add that that component to, to this operation. So uh, that's part of our proposal, I should say, that we'll go to the city council with. A any other uh, comments or, or uh, questions from the 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 folks on the on the call? Hi, Omar. Hi. Hi, Joe Scuncio here. I'm a commercial real estate broker in the uh, city of San Jose since 1989 and a resident since that time. And uh, I've seen a lot of changes, as many have, um, in the uh, people that are in need. And uh, with the amount of 
motorhomes with tents and things going on in their city, we're going to need to come up with a solution. I think what you have done here is a definite perfect solution for our situation, uh, especially under a controlled environment, a management and a safe place. I think that's very important. Um, in getting the vehicles off of residential streets, away from parks, I think we really have to look at also the commercial and all the, the, the buildings we have, the manufacturing buildings, you have property owners and you have tenants that are being affected by the motorhomes being parked in their streets and a lot of the disrepair, a lot of the um, trash waste going on and tapping into the buildings, as you said previously, with electrical and water. But um, I think this is a really positive way to uh, move forward and help people in the community. Um, as long as once they move on to the site, it's well managed. And are their motorhomes going to be operable or are they just going to be towed there? We, I don't know that part, but uh, I think it's a great thing that you're doing and, and I'm all behind that. Thank you for that, um, uh, Joe. Appreciate you uh, offering those comments. And, and, and I would say uh, the, the question was, uh, are vehicles, um, they have to be operable to go on the site or they're going to be towed there. That's, that's one of the due diligence components that we're still working through. I will say that one of the things we are actively trying to do is to not be in a situation where we can't have somebody move because there are people in inoperable um, vehicles, right? Uh, other kinds of circumstances. What we want to do is to help people get from that space on the street where there isn't a place to use the restroom safely, where, there, where all of the challenges and struggles that we all understand and get them to another location. So we're, we're, we're going through the process of making sure that our tow contracts, for example, are the kind that can allow for that to be possible. Uh, figuring out what it is that we might do to help them once they're there, figure out like, okay, well, this isn't really working and it's not salvageable, kind of what are the next steps? Uh, but, but what we can't do is, is nothing, right? We can't, we can't let, let these sort of steps and hurdles stop us from making the progress that our, our residents, our elected leaders um, are, are, frankly, for those of us who are sitting our bosses, everybody wants to see. We want to do this in a, in a humane, person-centered way that, that leverages people's experience to, that are living out there like, to do it right. Um, but we want to do it. We want to act. And so we're, we're, we're really um, grateful for members of the community to, to, to join uh, this call and provide their, their input. I want to see if they're... Um, if there are anybody else that, that, that is, is not a member of city staff or the elected leadership that, that wants to comment, and then I'm gonna just see if our elected leaders wanna say anything to, as, we, as we wrap. So any other comments from the public? Okay. Again, I will say this, this recording of this community session, which we provided sort of advance notice uh, around the, the, the site at 1300 Berryessa, uh, for this RV uh, community safe parking uh, proposed location. Uh, it was noticed a few weeks ahead of time. This recording will be posted online. It'll probably take a couple of days, maybe a week, but you'll be able to access it there and can, can share it. Uh, and, and this time I'm, I'm gonna ask and just check, I don't know, uh, Council Member Cohen, if you, if you have any, any um, uh, last remarks you wanna make uh, before we, we, we wrap. Um. No, I think you did a great job of explaining what's happening um, and what the proposal is on the site on Berryessa Road. It's a great site for this in, in that it's a, a large property um, with some good uh, boundaries around it, large um, closed off site that's got some good setbacks from the road and and but also is has space for all the services that people need. So we're hoping it'll work out. And uh, again, as I said before, any questions about it? please feel free to reach out to our office at district four at San Jose, ca.gov. Thank you, Council Member Cohen. I, I think I'm just making sure that we don't have any other electeds. Um, the, the final thing that I'll say, I think we've, we've covered all the ground. Uh, we've described what we're going. It's important if you're watching this, even as a, on a recorded basis to know uh, there's a lot of due diligence to be done. We are working aggressively to do that and to, to, to make sure, but there's a lot of pieces and parts that we have to weigh to make sure that we're protecting the people who may end up um, um, having their RVs on the site, to make sure that it works for the 
community. So we will continue to push forward um, um, in those efforts. And we're looking to, as I said before, come to council ideally on May uh, 23rd uh, to, to seek the, the uh, mayor and council's um, input and support, and then uh, to keep moving forward. So uh, I want to thank everybody. You can, uh, this is not the last time you're able to come to the council meeting. If you want to share your input, council member Cohen gave his, his email address. And um, and we'll just uh, stop there and say thank you for for taking the time to to come out. Everyone, uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.